Wow, is it almost 10 years since this channel started already? Crazy. While I'm busy working on a normal number of small-scale, unambitious videos for a modest celebration of the channel, I thought I could spend some time answering some of the most frequently asked questions about how things are done behind the scenes here at Door Monster. We've covered a wide range of on-set practices throughout our many behind-the-scenes videos already, and now that we're in an age of literally everybody using their phone to do a job I once thought I kind of made up, I thought it might be interesting to go back through Door Monster history and take a look at all the equipment and various processes that we've used. I spent years mastering the art of making making professional looking footage with minimal equipment and little to no crew. Now, take these long form videos. This is some of the better looking talking head footage I think I've ever produced and... Well... My favorite aspect of the filmmaking process is seeing how far you can stretch your resources. I like the problem solving, so much so that having enough money to make it easy makes it less fun. I'm a freak. But that doesn't mean money doesn't help. All those totally unambitious 10 year anniversary videos happen to be taking so much work that it would be extra helpful to donate on Patreon this month. I've added a special tier to get your name credited at the beginning of those videos and I'll give some more info at the end of this video. There are some basics that have proven to be pretty essential over the years and I've developed a sort of standard kit that I try to drag around with me everywhere. These are by no means required to do what I do. I'm just gonna show you everything I used and how much it cost because when I was first getting started, I would always get annoyed at videos where people were like, this is super easy for a beginner to do. All you need is this low budget $2,000 camera. Okay, thanks. I guess I'll dig around in the garbage outside of Best Buy and cross my fingers. So I'm gonna list everything I've ever used over the last 10 years during a lot of different phases of the channel. Some of it is expensive, but the newest equipment I own is five years old at this point, and after that, I'm gonna try and actually give some useful advice to people starting from scratch, like I did, because we wanna do things now, not wait until we have the right toys. Rest assured, it is worth it, even if it's not gonna be perfect. I've gone through a few cameras on the main channel. The very first videos were shot on a Canon Vixia HV40 HD camcorder with 10 times optical zoom. It was a gift from my parents. I was about to go to film school and it was already super outdated at the time. Everybody at the Art Institute had DSLRs, fancier cameras for those who don't know, but that didn't stop me from using this baby all the way to 2016, up until the Half-Life videos. To get the footage from it, I couldn't just plug it in and move the files to my computer. That would be too easy. Instead, I had to plug it into my computer with a now extinct cable called a Firewire and then play it back in real time to capture the footage off the tapes. Uh, tape. I'd then write over the same tapes over and over again. The first upgrade was the Panasonic AGAC90 camcorder, which was almost $1,700 at the time. It was actually the first huge purchase from saving up Patreon and YouTube ad revenue. The biggest improvement being that I could now record to an SD card, just like everyone else had been doing for years. I could also mount a microphone to the top of it, which opened the possibility to move around a lot easier. I remember there was more control over the video settings, but it was still like a built-in lens, so it wasn't especially robust. It also had that thing where you could only record for 20 minutes at a time, so it didn't legally have to be taxed as a camcorder in Europe or whatever, but like, that's what it was, so I don't really get how that works. It was a pretty reliable camera, although there was a period where it started glitching out and recording all of the footage with these, like, horizontal bars on it. I couldn't fix it, so I had to mail it in to Panasonic. That was a whole fiasco. So there's a couple videos from around late 2016 where we went back to the old camera. It might have been because it fell on some rocks once. Who's to say? I actually got pretty good at prioritizing uh, taking fall damage to my own body rather than damaging the camera though, because uh, I was 24 at the time and my reasoning was that I could heal, but the camera could not. And honestly, uh, rock solid, I was right. Around 2018, we needed a couple of new cameras for that Sky Vault thing. With the help of our resident camera consultant on the Doormonster Discord server known as Major Asshole, we selected the Sony A7S II. And those are what I'm using to this day, mostly because I've never been able to afford another camera. Even so, the DSLRs have been working great for years. We originally picked it because we needed something modern but not prohibitively expensive that could shoot in 4K with decent low light response for a DSLR, which as all of you certainly know, gets notoriously grainy. This is the most most familiar I've ever gotten with a camera because of how many VFX shots and large-scale projects I've worked on. We've used these for everything over the last seven years. Sketches, community comments, D&D games, VFX work, photo scanning, nearly all with one lens, which is just a Sony 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. These were about $900 each. It's actually pretty common for these to be more expensive than the camera body and for them to never get any cheaper because they don't become obsolete. Back when we were filming our Stardew video, we actually got the chance to use a RED camera, by which I mean another guy filmed it for us. Red cameras are special. I don't know, they're real big and you can stick a lot of stuff to them and uh, people get really sensitive about it. I barely know anything about the Sony a7S II 
that I'm talking into right now. I don't know. Everybody uses them once they have money and they care a lot about cameras and they're movie makers. I'm never going to be able to afford one. <laughs> for Sky Vault, we actually ended up using an Ari Alexa Mini, which is like the standard for Netflix shows and was a piece of equipment that we had absolutely no business ever interacting with. And then, in my few years, I've collected some fun little cameras that for some reason I've never used. Including this little, like, bean-shaped thing. And it was an impulse buy back when I could afford to buy a neat little camera with my logo on it. Man, what happened? And also this drone, which we do have some shots from in an upcoming movie that we filmed with Matt last year, which I will be talking more about in the weeks to come. Currently for these long form videos, I use the Sony a7S II, also a Sony zoom lens. It goes from 70 to 200 millimeters. It was about $1,500 and I will never be able to replace any of this stuff if it breaks. The reason I use it is because the longer lens gives a shallower depth of field, which means things behind me get blurrier, even if they're not that far away. And since I'm just in front of this red curtain, it helps with the visuals, I think. I also use this teleprompter that we bought uh, back pre-COVID, previously only used by Ian to do there's rules for that. Since then, I have carried it around and thought, man, I bet that would make things a whole lot easier until I finally started actually using it like a month ago. This is about $200. Basically, it's got this diagonal mirror that will reflect light from underneath it, but block it from actually going into the camera lens. So I can look straight into the camera and read off of an old iPad with a $10 teleprompter software running on it, just like they do on TV. I've said it a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand more. Audio is more important than video. It just occurred to me that I probably shattered your eardrums and I'm sorry. I literally could not be making that promise to you without audio, but I can without video. If I had to save only some of my equipment from a burning building, uh, well, I'd probably still get the camera because I could replace these microphones easier. But if I had to film with only one piece of equipment, it would be this boom mic. This is my favorite thing. People will tolerate any visuals. They will watch grainy security cam footage if that's what you give them, but nobody wants to hear noisy or blown out sound. In the first few videos on the channel, I'm recording the audio directly into a Zoom H2 recorder, which was both a microphone and a recorder in one little creaky plastic box. The rhubarb will not be moved. As soon as I had earned any money from the channel, I bought a Zoom H4, which is the earliest model of that recorder that accepted XLR input, which are the industry standard audio cables. You can get the H4 for roughly less than 200 bucks, and I highly recommend it. I also bought my Audio-Technica AT897, uh, which is the boom mic, and I immediately fell in love. That's what you're hearing right now, and this is what our new microphone sounds like. Eventually, I bought a second one. They're still between two and three hundred dollars, but you don't need this. I do not respect brand supremacy when it comes to audio. I'm also not an audio technician. I'm just an independent artist with lots of experience, and while it's important to get good audio, Whatever works, works. You don't need to get too bogged down in specifics. A shotgun mic is the most versatile one I've ever had. I could use this for production voiceover for run and gun documentary stuff. If I could only have one, this is the one. The only big game changer for audio came with some good wireless lavalier mics, which Ian calls LeVar Burton mics because they kind of sound like that. Really miss having him on set. I didn't know which ones to get, but when we went to England and filmed with the Yogscast, Hat Films used these and they sounded perfect. So I just asked what they used uh, and they are the Countryman B6W4 FF0 SBSR. It's off the end of the teleprompter. The receivers are the Sennheiser EW1 12 PG3A. It'll all be in the description. They actually come with their own mics and they cost about 650 per set. You don't need all this. They have much more affordable setups now. I was just picky. These can be great. If you're doing big, wide cinematic shots, it's really nice to be able to record audio on set that is accurate to the performance and sounds good because it's right up in the actor's face. The downside is that these are expensive and they were a hassle to get all hooked up to each other and they constantly need batteries and they get in the way and the signal can break up if you're moving around. So they require constant monitoring. You have to really need their benefits for them to outweigh the cost. Currently, I use one of these and the boom mic off camera as a backup for recording these long form videos. I plug all of that into the Zoom H6. Uh, it just takes, it has more inputs. Good for podcasts. Believe it or not, only recently have I started to figure out lighting at all, and with it, actual shot composition. Blender and making CGI shots have taught me strangely a lot because I get to play with different lighting setups super easily. Unfortunately, this also means lighting is probably where I'm lacking the most. I'd love to use more specific lights and play with colors, but for now, I almost exclusively use these newer brand LED panels. They come in a $200 three pack with light stands and cases, and they are low quality, but effective enough. They can be plugged in or battery powered, and they're like an alternating grid of white and yellow LEDs that you can control the brightness of individually. I've been using them for a couple years now and they are 
exactly enough. When I first started, I simply did not use lights. I needed the audio to be good and still had to record things off my old camera, so lighting wasn't even on my mind. Eventually, I got a hold of this old government surplus used light kit for $45, and it came with three lights that used halogen bulbs that got so hot, I was always worried about burning things on them, and did multiple times. Knock on wood was the first video that we ever lit anything on purpose, but we had no idea what we were doing, so we just kind of pointed them at ourselves. You think film school would have helped with that? But it didn't. The thing about lighting is it doesn't actually matter where it comes from. You can use lamps or the sun, whatever's around. If you have something that produces light and you understand how lighting affects the composition of your scene, you can make it work. The final category of equipment is black sticks. This right here is a light stick. This is a sound stick. That is a camera stick. You need them to hold things and I've bought a lot of them. This is normally where I'd put an ad break to something like a Dollar Shave Club. Do they still sponsor things? But I've decided not to for two very important reasons. One, they haven't paid me. And two, I think it would be way more fun to advertise fun things that you did. So I'm offering viewers the opportunity to pay for essentially an ad spot in these, but at a much lower cost, just because I, I think it's better. You guys all make cool stuff anyway, and it's more relevant to the people watching these videos especially this one. You ever think, man, I love that one part from that one door monster video, but I don't want to go dig through all the videos just to find it. I wish somebody very helpfully cut compilations of door monster videos and especially live streams. Well, we're all in luck because there's Backdoor Productions. Backdoor Productions is a YouTube channel and cool guy who's been around for like years at this point, and I have taken this long to mention that we talk to him frequently. He's actually editing this video, and he is our resident door monster historian. I don't remember most of the things I've said, but Backdoor does, and anytime I need something, I can just ask him where it is, and he knows. He knows everything. He's done a ton of compilations from OK We're Up, the live stream morning show that Allison and I did for a few years. He also makes compilations of any gaming series we do, like the Persona playthrough that we've been doing. He also has a podcast called Before the Door, where he interviews other Door Monster fans, how they got into the channel. I listened to it just enough to confirm that it sounds great and seems like a really fun time. Backdoor's got a great voice, uh, but I had to stop because I felt too weird about listening to a podcast about me. So if you want bonus Door Monster content and I'm not putting out enough stuff, go check out Backdoor Productions. The channel is in the description and is now on the bottom of actually every Door Monster official channel where it should have been the whole time. That's a lot of equipment and the truth is it isn't super easy to just get perfect footage right off the bat. Your footage is gonna suck when you start. But the good news, I think, is that it isn't nearly as much about the equipment as it is about your understanding of what you need it to do. As an example, I shot these Sims videos with my old DV tape camera. They were actually some of the first ones I ever made. And then, about a year later, when the next camera broke and I had to go back to the tape one for a couple of videos, I filmed this. That's the same camera, with the only difference being a year's worth of trial and error. You can already tell it's much better, even though there's no lighting in either of those shots. Similarly, this shot I got with the camera I'm currently using, and it it looks just about as bad as The Sims videos, whereas this one looks cinematic as hell. This whole studio setup I've got, it all works because I finally figured out what actually needed to be here and how to make it all work together. Over time, it just became muscle memory, and now I don't have to double check everything every single time just to make sure it'll still be usable when I'm editing. So now I can just plug everything in and then go without worrying about how good the footage is going to come out. But honestly, it took a really long time to get here. Here's the part everyone hates to hear. More expensive gear does not magically mean better content. So much of this craft is just making mistakes and learning how to avoid it later. Things are going to look rough at the beginning, but it's completely okay. Unless it's something I made, and then it's not okay. Everything needs to look perfect. I think it was on the Age of Wonders set, Matt and I realized just how impossible that video would have been to shoot a few years ago. Not because it was more expensive, or because I was even using any different equipment, because I wasn't. It was the same stuff. It's just that the knowledge we had to make sure all the footage actually came out right the first time and blended directly into the digital environments I had built had to be learned over the years. Like, even this video is weirdly far beyond the capabilities of 2017 me. It doesn't take any more time, I just know how to set all of this up now in a way that doesn't result in me pulling up the footage later and realizing it's completely out of focus and grainy and sounds like garbage. And even if I lost any of these tools, I know how to compensate. Like, if I didn't have this camera, I would mount my phone 
and to this thing on probably like a table or some boxes. I'd probably have to move it in really close and expect to do some digital cropping later because these lenses are pretty wide and uh, I might even be able to buy an attachment to clip onto the outside to make it behave a little more like a traditional camera lens. And I'd probably keep it pretty still just in case the autofocus had any issues or it had like a rolling shutter. Although I think that's all decently reliable on phones most of the time these days. If I didn't have the teleprompter, I'd actually do it like I did all the way back in the Batman video a few months ago, where I just went paragraph by paragraph and said it until it came out right. It all works the same in the final edit, and it just takes longer. Is that the line? Teleprompters can also just be built. The concept is pretty simple, and there's some old classic backyard effects videos that tell you how to make your own just out of stuff you can get from Home Depot. If I didn't have this little monitor, which I haven't mentioned yet, but I do use pretty often, I would drag a computer monitor or a TV in here. I've done that a lot. I'm actually literally doing it right this second. Seeing the image on a bigger screen is helpful enough that basically anything that can take HDMI input is worth it. If I was using my phone, I'd really put in the effort to find a way to mirror it on a screen or a laptop or something because I've done too much guesswork where I just point the camera at myself and hope for the best. That's why I'm slightly out of focus in so many early videos. But you know what? Worst case scenario, I would just do that again because it worked before. The monitor is technically not a necessity. If I'm really starting entirely from scratch, the audio is the one thing I would try my best to spend money on, but acknowledging that I'm talking about specifically not having much money, I would use YouTube video reviews to find something cheap that I could still confirm sounded pretty good when it was next to someone's face. My blue snowball here is $40, and it's not bad, and it's probably not even the best you could get for that price. I once bought these three packs of stage mics for the same amount. If you or someone you know or someone you don't know has an iPhone lying around, borrow it. Their internal microphones are actually pretty good. You can also get some decent stuff that just plugs directly into your phone, but the important thing is that I would start holding the microphone in the video and just intentionally make that an aesthetic change because it would be more important that the audio sound good than that I looked professional. Working within your limitations gives you more options and flexibility than pretending like they don't exist. And finally, if I didn't have my tripods and my light stands and all that stuff, uh, I would just buy them anyway, because those cost either $20 or $500 with no in-between, and I have not now, nor will I ever buy the expensive ones. But man, is that $20 worth it for not having to tape your equipment to a broomstick, which I have also done. And honestly, good tape also costs like $20, so. And that is the overview on what I use to film my videos. There are absolutely a lot more elements to production than just tools. There's writing, there's acting, there's editing. And I'd love to talk more about those, and I probably will, because it's easy and my attention is currently elsewhere. Remember how I said I'm not really doing much of anything for the 10 year anniversary? I'm not being entirely truthful. I don't want to give too much away, but I'm working on kind of a complicated mini-series of videos that I feel compelled to make and that I think will uh, reward everyone for watching all of these years. I'm really excited about them and I'm diving in head first, but it means I have to take some attention away from uh, regular uploads and making money for a couple of months. Not to say I won't be uploading, I'll be uploading the specials for people who have been here for a long time. They're not gonna blow up is my point. I'm not prioritizing the algorithm. So if you would like to assist in producing the Doormonster 10 year anniversary specials, now would be an awesome time to subscribe on Patreon. If you donate on or above the special temporary producer tier, I'll add your name to the beginning of the videos. You'll get priority credit on all of the, the specials. Additionally, more of these long form videos are coming out soon. And if you're interested in sponsoring one, like the Backdoor Productions ad you saw today, hit me up on Discord, Patreon, or my email below, and we can work out an exchange where I'll advertise anything you want. For patrons, I'll also be uploading a bunch of behind the scenes stuff for the anniversary videos, again, while attempting to not give too much away narratively. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I said I was gonna put the first anniversary special up on November 1st, and that is three weeks away. Uh-oh.